Some people call BlackRock the fourth branch of government. So like, this is a big deal. This company is up. I can't overstate it really how crucial they are. Largest asset manager in the planet. And many of these tokens right now, they're potentially non-compliant and I'll leave it at that. You gotta remember, in 20, March 2020, the Fed moved in to help the markets by providing liquidity. What did they do? They bought fixed income ETFs to give the bond market liquidity, and they BlackRock basically did that program for them. Today, we are joined by Eric Balkunas, who shares his upcoming prediction for Bitcoin and why BlackRock has less than two weeks before the approval of their Bitcoin ETF. He explains why he's bullish in 2024 and with the upcoming Bitcoin halving event set for April, the crypto market is expecting a massive surge in a matter of days. The anticipation surrounding the impending approval of a Bitcoin spot ETF by the US Securities and Exchange Commission is the biggest event for crypto in recent history. The SEC is actively reviewing multiple applications for this ETF and BlackRock's significant influence is expected to play a crucial role in 2024. There is an increasingly strong belief that we will witness the approval of at least one Bitcoin spot ETF, with the others sure to follow directly after. This milestone is eagerly awaited by the Bitcoin community, and the approval of such an ETF would carry profound implications for the world of cryptocurrency, serving as a gateway to substantial institutional investments. Balkunas envisions that this development will pave the way for large corporations to incorporate cryptocurrencies into their balance sheets. Let's get right into the latest interview with Eric Balkunas as he dives into why Bitcoin is poised to revolutionize cryptocurrency heading into 2024. Also, we have just partnered with our friends over at Jamie Tree Finance, who have just launched a daily five-minute crypto newsletter. It's a fantastic analysis of on-chain crypto data and breakdowns, and the best part, it's absolutely free, which will cover expert predictions, breakdowns of on-chain crypto data, and any breaking news that you need to know all in a nutshell. Click the first link in the description and enter your email to join over 5,000 others in becoming a better crypto investor right now. I didn't think BlackRock was even looking at this. And because over the last 10 years, we've seen filings come in, but they're always from these like, we'll call them the mid-tier issuers. Like there's the top five, and then there's like Fanec, Global X, um, ARC. Like th these are all legitimate issuers, but they're not in the top five and especially not the top three especially not the number one. So BlackRock filing is just like mind blowing. And they have so much going on. You just think like, and then Larry Fink, I you know, we all remember him like kind of trashing crypto like five years ago. So it made no sense to me. And so when I saw it, I was like, oh my God. So James and I quickly huddled and our odds of approval went from 1% to 50 instantly. Wow. Because wow. it was like, what does BlackRock know? This makes no sense. If any other issue file besides BlackRock, Vanguard, or maybe State Street, we're just not moving our odds. So anyway, they went to 50%, and then we started to dig through why, and and then Larry Fink goes on Fox News or Fox Business maybe within like a week of that, and he starts calling Bitcoin like, you know, digital gold, and it's the new thing, and I'm like, oh my God. So we stuck at 50, and we thought, okay, and then we thought he clearly is into this and I, we then looked at their annual report and we realized he had a couple things in there that he was looking to do uh, that I thought were revenue generators. So I think BlackRock largely sees a revenue opportunity, but I also think they see a revenue opportunity, but a disintermediating opportunity. Like BlackRock is, has a little vanguard in them. They do like to go in and disrupt. And I think they see that uh, the crypto trades, the crypto exchanges, um, a, are, are expensive and B, after FTX, can you trust them? You know, and that was something they saw probably. They're like, hey, we can make it safer and cheaper. So anyway, they launched and then other people followed suit because they did. And then we started looking at the Grayscale case and we were like, wait, if Grayscale wins, this could really, maybe BlackRock, this is like a call option. In case Grayscale wins, BlackRock will be right there. 
So then we had all these theories on like BlackRock being there so the SEC could like hand them the keys and not Grayscale. And anyway, long story short, Grayscale won their case and our odds went to 90, um, you know, by, by the first final deadline, which was January 10th, which is coming up and we're still there. And so, but to your point, BlackRock was a shocker. And then the Grayscale winning, we only had a 40% chance. So even that was a bit of a shocker, although 40% was pretty de- reasonable and they won. And so I think those two things really got us on this trajectory up to 90%. And then the bigger, the, the final thing that was huge was seeing and hearing back channel that the SEC was engaging, you know, saying, here's our comments on your prospectus. Because up until then, and your 10 years, the Winklevoss twins started it. Every time we had these cycles, it would be like 10 filings and then radio silence, delay, radio silence, delay, and then radio silence, denial. This time we heard there's no radio silence. They were talking to the issuers, giving them comments. Then you saw the perspectives coming in, updated, updated. That was major and that justified our 90%, we thought, because you just aren't, that's normal. And so normal was a break from the pattern. The radio silence denial thing is abnormal. So it was a pattern of abnormalcy for 10 years. And now we have normalcy, that's a good sign. So that's sort of where we are now. And there's obviously some other little nuances we can get into, but. Um, we feel like now we're feeling pretty good that we stuck our neck out there. We were a little early and we were a little optimistic versus our peers and versus some other people. But I, you know, we held the line and it looks like it's pretty good chance they, they will be approved January by January 10th. With unwavering optimism for the crypto market, Balkunas boldly foresees imminent explosive growth, highlighting the active involvement of industry giants like BlackRock. Emphasizing a long-anticipated surge, Balkunas anticipates a significant upswing in the lead-up to the highly awaited 2024 Bitcoin halving event. The volume will be underwhelming after Bitto, because remember, Bitto launched in a mania. October 2021 was a mania. It was like Beetle mania, but Bitcoin mania. So that's gone. The thrill, all the mania is gone. And those little retail investors, they're either using Coinbase or they're just once bitten, twice shy. I don't need a crypto anymore. So those, those, all those minnows that bid on Bitto the first day, I don't think they're in the, in the lake anymore. What's in the lake though, underneath is these bigger fish, these advisors. And they're not just, they don't rush to the bait. Okay. They're going to swim around it. Look. So the good news is the bigger fish are there. They're hard to catch and they don't bite early. So you're probably going to see a lot less volume and assets early. Again, though, we will see enough to see which ETF gets the mojo, but it's over time, over a year, two years, three years, that I think we see somewhere 20 to 40 billion uh, yeah. in this category. If wow. you extrapolate the spot Bitcoin ETFs in Canada and you extrapolate them to the size of the US market, you get 70 billion in the US. If you extrapolate Europe, you get to 30 billion. So we're kind of in the middle, 45, 50 billion is where we think the US market will be after a couple of years. And then maybe it inches up to 70 billion. That's right where gold is about. And that puts you at 1% of ETF assets. So that's our general estimate. But because advisors are the bigger fish who are going to swim around a little bit and wait to see which one's successful, which one's cheapest. uh, But once they bite, they're big. So that's the good news. So I think we're going to see incremental big bites from model portfolios and advisors, but they don't... They're not going to rush in the first day like we saw with Ditto. My question to you as well is, okay, there's the 1% maybe for the Bitcoin spot ETF. Like how likely is it or how much attention, relative attention are these other um, potential crypto ETFs going to attract, do you think? I I think minimal. Um, And, you know, the Mm Ether Futures ETFs launched, they really kind of, um, nobody cared. Um, And I think the question, we know they don't, look, people don't like futures especially advisors, like they don't want derivatives. They'd rather have spot. Right. But even the Bitcoin futures ETF has action. I mean, it still trades like, let me see what the, I mean, the trading volume on. It's very good. It will dwindle once the spot launches, but right now it's the only game in town. It trades $300 million a day. It's very good. Um, so nobody really using the Ether futures ETF. That's probably a bad sign for like the what comes next crowd. You know, would a spot Ether do better? Probably it would do better in the futures. That's for sure. But how good would it do? I think for most advisors, and again, normal people who are not into this that much, I think Bitcoin's plenty. Yeah. Uh, 
I think they're largely going to go around Bitcoin. And you do have some pretty big advocates in your world saying, you know, like Sailor, there is no second best. But like Matt Hogan, who's someone I trust, who's, you know, he's from the ETF world, but is pretty much embedded in crypto now. He thinks Ether is a bigger deal than Bitcoin. Um, I don't know. But even with him saying that, I, I know, like, if I'm a, for my regular person, if I'm just sitting there and thinking of my own personal account, I'm probably thinking, you know what, honey, just buy a little of this Bitcoin, it, that it'll move with Ether. They're all the same. It's good enough. It's the one. We don't need to go crazy here. That, that's sort of, I think, how most people are going to play this. As we stand on the precipice of January of 2024, the crypto market is poised for a meteoric surge in prices. He illustrates Bitcoin's current undervaluation, drawing in investors and enticing speculators eager to ride the waves of September's price fluctuations in pursuit of profits. Balkuna's outlook is fueled by the impending wave of mass adoption, which he believes presents an unparalleled opportunity to get in on the action. He sees the race toward a six-figure price target set to unfold in just under a year. What's more, he highlights the intriguing historical pattern of Bitcoin's value surging 10x with each halving event, hinting that 2024 could catapult Bitcoin from $10,000 to an unbelievable $100,000. What do you think about Eric Balkunas' prediction for Bitcoin, the crypto market cap, as well as the institutional capital pouring into the space? Comment down below. Thanks so much for watching. Don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe for more content just like this. We'll see you in the next video.